What makes an effective and successful software engineer? I believe it's not just that you get a great job with a high paying salary and you get to call yourself successful, but it is the things that you do as a software engineer, which is for us writing code, building features and building great software consistently, which makes us effective and successful at our job. And that's when we get to call ourselves a successful software engineer, I believe. So how do you measure that? How do you measure your effectiveness and success as a software engineer on a weekly basis to know if you're actually being effective at being a good engineer or not and how can you even measure anything unless you have certain metrics that you can track and a system that you can habitualize and consistently do every single week to measure your outputs to measure your results to see if you are actually being productive at what you do which is why in this video I wanted to share with you guys five core responsibilities that I believe are crucial for any software engineer as a way and as a framework to, to measure your weekly progress, it is a framework that I have come up with for my own personal use with weekly measurables that I can track to measure my own effectiveness and success on an ongoing basis and share it with you guys in the hopes that maybe it could help you out as well. To give you guys a little bit of context, I've been in the software industry writing software building features for about five years now. And when I used to work for bigger tech companies, we had systems and processes in place and people in place to keep us accountable, to keep all the engineers accountable of their work. We would have scrum masters, we would have product managers to comb through the backlog of work that had to be done. And we as a team would collect bi-weekly every sprint and go through these tasks and stories and the backlog of work and assign points to them that would measure the complexity of a certain work and also the estimate of time that it would require an engineer to finish that amount of work. And after that, we would all decide on how many points an engineer would be completing that sprint, how much work would they be doing. And each of us will be assigned different tasks, different stories, different features to build along with bug fixes and things like that. And that was a great way to measure our progress. At the end of the sprint, if we were successful, we would be done with at least 90% to 80% of the story points that was assigned to us. And to measure if we were kind of slacking, anywhere between 50 to 60% was not good enough. And that meant that you had to pull up your socks and put in more work the next sprint to consistently produce better results. But what happens when you are a freelancer working for your own self or your own business or even working as a software engineer at an early age startup? Well, once I moved from working with bigger tech companies to start working with a Silicon Valley tech startup last year. It's been a little bit more than a year now, I feel. But when I just started, it was very hard for me to actually measure my progress and measure my success when I was working on full stack features, because here we didn't have anyone to tell us what to do. We were kind of like owners of our work. We would go on collect requirements ourselves. We would go on design our own solutions and then implement that into the code to build the software, to build the feature itself. And then we would be our own testers testing that code and then pushing it out to production, being our own DevOps guy as well. And there was no one to tell you that you have to fix as many bugs. There was no one to tell me that this feature should take as much time or it's as much complexity. It was all for me to figure it out. Now, as we have come a long way in this company, we have more processes and we have more people and product managers and things like that to kind of guide us along that journey and help us do those things better and track and measure our progress better. But when I had just started, it was very hard for me because I could not estimate how much time it would take for me to build a certain feature involving writing code on the front end, involving writing different API clients, writing business logic on the back end, working on database stuff, and even sometimes setting up things for deployments and stuff like that. And if I got in a slump, it would be very hard for me to kind of keep myself accountable to produce work, quality work to write quality quality code and build features consistently. So I came up with this framework that I could track and measure with consistent results and outputs that I want on a weekly basis. And in that framework, I identified there's five core responsibilities that would make me successful at the end of the week or every sprint. So let's talk about the first responsibility. This should be a no brainer. If you're a software engineer, you're definitely writing code, building features and adding to the code base that you're working on, the product that you're working on, 
with the team. So that should be our first responsibility. For that, I usually allocate anywhere from three to four hours of deep work every single day, five days a week to make progress on the work that I'm assigned. And I'm pretty sure wherever you guys might be working as an intern, junior level software engineer, mid-level software engineer, or even a senior level software engineer, we all get assigned certain features and tasks to write code for and build for the software that we are working on. So that is the first responsibility. But let's talk about some other responsibilities that might get missed out or we might just not be as diligent about them. The second one that I identified was bug fixes. Now at other places that I've worked at before, we had again product managers to tell and like to identify that there are bugs that are existing and they would be in the backlog and they would assign that to different engineers to fix in that certain sprint. But here at this company that I'm working with now, we have a backlog, but no one is really telling you to go on and fix a certain bug. You might get approached that, hey, something is broken. Can someone look at it? But it is the engineer's responsibility and diligence to actually raise up their hand and be like, yeah, I can go on and fix that or take a bug off of the task board and actually make the effort, create the time out of their regular busy work, working on the feature itself that they are assigned to make that happen, to create that value, fix that bug and resolve that issue and push it out to production so that the website is running well and our users are happy. The third responsibility that I identified is to review your coworkers code. Because when you are collectively working as a team on the same code base, every single person that has to do anything with that code base owns that code base. So it is your responsibility as a software engineer and as a good teammate to help review the code of your coworkers so that you as a team can make sure that whatever code is being pushed to production is of highest quality. Because at the end of the day, you will also be looking at that code, reading that code, building upon that code base and the features and maintaining it in the long run. So shouldn't it be your responsibility to make sure that whatever code that your coworkers are writing is of good quality and you can maybe provide feedback to help them improve their quality of the code that they are pushing out to production. And it's just a great way to build your skill to read more code and understand how someone else is coming up with a design pattern, a solution for a problem that they're trying to solve or a bug they're trying to fix. And it will only help you become a better software engineer by looking at other people's work. And at the end of the day, again, you could as a good teammate provide feedback, question their choices, question their decisions as to why they chose a certain name for a method. Why did they choose a certain name for a table or a column that had to be added to the database or if it was needed in the first place or not. You could help them optimize their queries so that the front end makes so the APIs are faster. Because at the end of the day, again, we all want our users to be happy and we want to make the code as efficient as possible. And it's just a healthy habit to be able to communicate well with your fellow engineers, especially when you're working remotely and you don't get to see them as often as you would in a traditional corporate job when you would be in the office five days a week, which is not the case anymore for most of us, right? Like I work remotely and in an asynchronous communication system, basically. No one is expected to reply right away. I work with people from all around the world in different time zones. So how do we go about communicating these things? Which is why I feel like code reviews are very important. If there's nothing else to provide feedback for, you could just appreciate the effort that someone has put into building a feature and it will just bring you guys closer as teammates and generate synergy for all of you guys to like collaborate better. Writing code and building software is a team sport. It's highly unlikely that you will be writing software from scratch and just doing it by yourself unless you're a freelancer working alone, which is another story. But if you're working in a company with a team, it's a team sport and everyone's going to be working on the same code base. So that is a really crucial responsibility that we should all be partaking in. Now let's talk about the fourth responsibility, which is going to be effective documentation and communication. I wasn't the most diligent person when it comes to documenting my code and communicating effectively on Slack and different places like Notion. We use Notion to track our projects and things like that. But Recently, as I have come across better engineers who are more diligent, not just at writing and building software and writing code, but also documenting their journey so that other people can also understand what they did. And to be honest, sometimes when I look at my code from a year ago, it's hard for me to understand what I did because I, I'm missing the context that I had a year ago, right? So it's very important to capture that context somewhere where you can revisit and understand the decisions and the choices that you made to help you write 
write the code. And we usually do that on the Notion task that captures basically the design process, the design files from Figma and things like that. And when I'm done writing my code, creating pull requests, I would usually go about, you know, adding all of those pull requests in one place. So anyone who visits that card can understand the entire feature, what was done, the work that was done very easily. And it's another step to help contribute to the team and help other people work with you better. So guys, take documentation very seriously and communicating with key stakeholders very seriously. It will only help you be a better software engineer, be a better team player. And just to remind you, writing software, building software, and building a good product is a team sport when you're working with other people. So you have to keep everyone in the loop as to what work you are doing. And it's a great way to leave a digital trail of the work that you have done and revisit that to just feel that you have accomplished so much because sometimes we keep on going on doing work and we are never really mindful about how much we have accomplished. So it's a great way to measure that as well. Let's talk about the fifth responsibility. Now, most of us, once we find a job or we start working and start making the money that we want to make, we forget about this. We focus on the work that needs to be done today, focuses on the work that needs to be delivered by the next of the week or before any deadline. But we stop educating ourselves. We stop playing with newer technologies, building our own personal projects, and slowly the passion to write code dies off. So it makes it very important for us to invest the time to explore new technologies, to see what other good things are happening, what other software engineers doing, what libraries, what languages are coming out. How could I learn that and implement that into my own workflow, into your own workflow to be better? And to be honest, I haven't been the most diligent about this either. But now I'm taking out the time to make a point of a few things that I want to learn. You know, like I've been writing Java for about a year now. I used to be a front end developer for a long time. So I'm good at those things. But now that my team is starting to write more Kotlin code and that's the direction as a team we are moving towards and all the developers agree that we want to be writing more Kotlin code. How would I go about adopting that new technology quicker as fast as possible if I don't build projects and go out and learn things on my own, which is why every month or so I go about picking up a few technologies that I want to learn, read documentation about, watch a few YouTube videos and build my own projects so that I know how to work with those technologies, even if it's like not for my current projects, but maybe sometime in the future, I might be able to use that. So these are the five core responsibilities that any software engineer could use as a framework and habitualize them to track and measure their progress. And just to go over the points quickly to summarize that everything. For myself, I created a, a weekly goal that I will be working at least three to four hours every single day on the feature work that I'm assigned. Second, for bug fixes, I want to fix at least one bug. My goal would be to fix two bugs, but sometimes it gets hard. So at least one bug every single week is what I want to do. Third, for code reviews, I want to get to a PR, a pull request and review my coworkers code within the two business days of me being assigned to that pull request, ideally on the same day, because it not only helps me provide feedback, but also helps me learn from their code. It helps me become a better software engineer. So that is another goal for me. For the fourth one, which is documenting, communicating effectively, whatever decisions I'm making, whatever resources I'm using, I try to document that on the Notion card that I'm working off of. And I try to communicate the same things to my team on Slack. I know sometimes it might get hard for me to communicate that and I feel that it might not be necessary. But guys, it's very crucial for everyone to be on the same page. And when you are a technical person, other people might find it hard to understand what's going on with the product. And it is our responsibility to explain that in layman terms to all the people that we work with. So I'm trying to be more diligent about that and do that more often as much as I can. And the fifth one, as I told you guys, that I'm taking the responsibility now to learn newer technologies. And the two things that I'm currently learning are Kotlin. And second, I want to be able to build beautiful 3D websites sites using React and Spline is a new framework that I came across. So I'll be exploring working with that and see what websites and projects that I can build on my own. So I'm allocating five hours every single week to be able to play with new technologies and learn these things. Comment down below. What are you learning? By the way, I would be very intrigued and very interested to know, like very curious to know what are you guys learning these days? I wanted to share this framework with you guys. So maybe it can help you because like when you're new in the industry, you're very lost. You don't necessarily understand what is expected of you, what work should you be doing, and you're kind of just running around fighting fires and not necessarily producing tangible results that you can come back
back to and measure and track and see if you're doing good work or not. Use this as a framework on a weekly basis and habitualize them. Create time to work on your feature tasks, to fix bugs and issues, to review code, to document and communicate effectively and learn, take the time to learn new things. Put certain like time on the calendar that you would be using as a way to keep yourself accountable so that nothing gets missed. And if you guys found this video helpful, if you found these tips helpful, please leave a like. It helps me reach out to more people. Leave a comment below which responsibility out of this five core responsibility framework are you kind of lacking on or you could do more off to be a more valuable team member at the companies that you're working at and the products that you're building on. Definitely subscribe to the channel, guys. I will be creating a lot more content around software engineering, sharing these tips with you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next video. I hope you all have a good one. All right, see ya.